1949, uh, the LPGA, the Babe uh, was a head pro at a club in Chicago, and I went to play there as an amateur. It was a women's Western Open. And we were having breakfast and, uh, with George Zaharias, her husband, and Marilyn Smith and I, and I was sitting across the table from Babe, and she said, uh, listen, kid, she said, why don't you turn pro? And I said, well, how do you do that? And she got up from the table and came over and hit her hand on my head and said, I declare you a pro. Go down there on the tee and tell them you're a pro. So that's how I turned pro. And uh, go down there on that tee and tell them. So I had to walk down the hill and should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I? And Mrs. Uh, Dennehy was the president of the Women's Western. And I said, excuse me, Mrs. Dennehy, uh, announced me as a pro today. And, and she said, does your mother know that? And I said, no, but she'll know tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I turned pro. And the wind blew 60 miles an hour, and it was blowing our ball off the green before we got to the green. And on one hole, I took the club back and lost my balance and whiffed the ball. <laughs> and I was playing with Marilyn and, and Louise Suggs, and uh, Louise was the only one of the 11 of us that were played there as pros, broke 80. And she shot 78. And most of them shot in the 80s, and I shot 90. That was my first game of golf <laughs> as a pro. Had you ever met Babe Zaharias before she asked you to join the tour? No, I think that was the first time that I met her because coming from Michigan and driving to Chicago was a big deal to play in the, in the Women's Western Open. As most people know, if a tournament title has open in it, it means anyone can play, an amateur or a pro. What would she like to play with, and, and what would she like just uh, they, to they, that tour? How important was she to that There's some ducks tour? outside. I have yeah, a duck uh, <laughs> phone, and ducks. Uh, <laughs> oh. that way the people don't know I'm, my phone's ringing. <laughs> we'll so, never know. We'll never tell. Pardon? We'll never tell anybody, but <laughs> what was the babe like? Do you have any babe stories? Well, yes, uh, babe knew babe was good. She knew she was good, and she told everybody she was good. And uh, when you'd come to the tournament and walk in the locker room, she'd say, well, the babe's here, who's going to be second? Uh, she really uh, was entertaining to the, gov to the public, to the spectators. Uh, she drew in uh, interest in women's golf. Babe, uh, I remember playing in uh, a tournament in Florida uh, at the uh, break, not the breakers, uh, both not that important, but it was in Florida. And uh, I happened to shoot a better score than her that day. And uh, she said to me, well, listen, kid, how did you, how did you beat me today? And I said, well, I guess I beat, played better, babe. And from that on, to that time on, we were, pals and friends, and uh, I was hitting a, practicing at the Tamashaner some chip shots with a, with the only wedge we ever had was a R90. Today they have six wedges in their bag, but yeah. she said, what are you trying to do? And I said, well, I'm trying to make the club ball go up there and stop. She said, give me the club. And she hit the ball, and she said, now that's the way you do it, and walked away. <laughs> That was it. Was she really the best? Was she the best? Or were there she others? was the best. Well, she really was the best. She dominated she, your She tour. didn't have a graceful, beautiful swing, but she whacked at it. And I saw her hit a five iron out of rough that was like eight inches high, and she hit it like it was on a tee, right, boom, right on the green. She was strong. She was could she, do was, all those was things. Was she better than a Mickey Wright? Or who do you think Well, was, no, no, no. No? Uh, we have to look back at records, and records are made in reference to the era, the equipment they used, the condition of the player. Uh, in our, our LPGA, we must honor Kathy Whitworth, who won 
the most ever golf tournaments, 84. And I would say that 95% of them are in this country. She didn't travel around the world. So we have the, the record for a person, man or woman, winning the most tournaments, Kathy Whitworth. And when, when Nikki Wright came along in her golf, the era of and the type of swing that was being created, and golf as a teacher studying the game and having taught in seven decades, in the seventh decade of teaching, the swing changed every 10 years. And it got better and better and better, and the equipment got better and better and better. So along with that came Nikki, Nikki Wright, who I would say probably had the best golf swing professional woman golfer ever. Uh, she was taught different than we were. We were taught to swing and sweep the swing and brush the call. And Mickey learned to drive her legs and hit the power, release the power later, and the ball went further. So on our tour, Mickey in the 50s and 60s, we hit the drive 225 and, and Mickey hit it 240. And we didn't care who, we didn't try to hit it farther. Everybody hit it the same. All we did is hit it straight. <laughs> I, I true, I could put my hand on a Bible in all the tournaments I ever played. I don't think I was ever out of bounds more than five times in my life. <laughs> because we just hit it straight and we hit lots of balls. We didn't uh, do anything but try to, our diet, we tried to do the correct, uh, we ate tuna fish and we ate liver and, you know, that was the year, uh, steak and protein and Marilyn had vitamins, we all took vitamins. I guess I'm still here today because I take a lot of vitamins. <laughs> and uh, so uh, along, along the, the tour, as it developed, uh, we have the babe to look towards. And when, when Dave passed, when Babe passed away early in her life, she was only 40, yeah. between, I think it was 42, uh, we lost a lot because the people came out to see the babe. And we had to gather up more uh, players and start getting more publicity. And in the early days, we had to do everything. We had to make the pairings, we had to rule on our own players, we had to mark the course, and we had to go to a payphone and, and uh, uh, call APUP at Sunday night as we were driving to the next place and give them the results. So our only advertising came from APUP and Golf World. That was it. So we had to entertain the press. So we came into a town that was up to our little group 